Many times you will hear our religious leaders and our imams say that Islam is a religion of peace. And yes, my dear sisters and brothers, Islam is in fact a religion of peace, just like many other faiths are religions of peace and were brought to this earth to bring peace amongst the people. But what inspires me about Islam is not that it's a religion of peace, but that it is a religion of justice. And there cannot be peace, sisters and brothers, without there being justice. Surah Al-Imran tells us Allah does not wish injustice for any of his creations. So when we talk about justice in Islam, justice is not just us. There is nowhere in our Quran or in the seerah of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon him, or in any ahadith that say that justice in Islam is just about Muslims. That when we stand up against injustice, we only stand up against injustice if it is happening to those who are Muslims or not. We sisters and brothers are a faith that tells us to stand up for justice regardless of the communities, regardless of those who are oppressed. I am a proud Muslim American who will stand up for any oppressed communities, standing up for African Americans in the Muslim community and outside the Muslim community, undocumented people in the Muslim community and outside the Muslim community, standing up for those who are fighting for justice in places like South America, just like I stand with the people fighting for justice in the Muslim world. Sisters and brothers, how could we sit back and not be loud and active and stand up against injustice that is happening in Palestine or in Syria or in Somalia or in Yemen or in Sudan? How do we as a community, sisters and brothers, make the decisions not to be political and stand up for those who are the most oppressed. It reminds me of the story and the recent case around the Muslim ban. When Donald Trump became president, just a week into his presidency, he announced a ban on six Muslim majority countries. First it was seven, now we're at Muslim ban four, and it is six countries. Sisters and brothers, we went to the Supreme Court, and we lost in the Supreme Court. Sisters and brothers, do you believe that you love your children more than Yemeni fathers love their children? Do you love your children more than Somali mothers love their children or Libyan mothers? or Irani mothers? Why is it that our community, we are about three to five million Muslims in America, why did we not stand up boldly and strongly to this administration and say we will not sit back while you ban our fathers and mothers from their children? Where were we sisters and brothers? Why were we not out in the street in the thousands letting people know that they cannot take our families away from us. Sisters and brothers, sometimes I question us as a community. We only stand up against injustice when that injustice comes to our front door. That is not what it means, sisters and brothers, to be a Muslim. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon him, who was the most perfect activist that this world has ever seen. Sisters and brothers, our beloved Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon him, lived a true example for all of us. He was a feminist in his own right. He encouraged the education of our daughters. He centered the women in his society. I don't need anybody in the West to explain to me women's rights and feminism because I am a Muslim and I know everything that I need to know about women's rights from my beloved Dean sisters and brothers. 
Sisters and brothers, I, as a Muslim American, did not need a hashtag five years ago to tell me that black lives matter. My beloved Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon him, taught us that nobody is better because of their race or their color of their skin, that we should be judged based on our piety and good deeds. That our deen Islam is an anti-racist religion, sisters and brothers. It is a religion that calls upon us to treat everyone with dignity and respect. And it is therefore that I conclude that our beloved Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon him, was a racial justice activist. I remember an imam in San Diego, Imam Taha Hussain from the Islamic Center of San Diego, stood up on a stage at a rally to raise the living wage. And he said in front of a non-Muslim crowd, he said and recited a hadith that said, pay the worker before the sweat on his forehead dries. And what I realized in that moment, sisters and brothers, is that our beloved Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon him, was a workers' rights activist. And I know that our Lord is going to ask us, he's going to say, what did you do with all the blessings that I gave you? What did you do when unarmed black men and women were being killed at the hands of law enforcement in your communities? What did you say? What did you do? What did you do with Allah's blessings when young Guatemalan, Honduran, Mexican mothers were stripped from their children at the border? When babies were being put in cold cages in these United States of America on your watch? There have been four children under the age of eight years old that have died in U.S. custody on your watch. What did you do? What did you do when millions of Americans have lost their health care and are dying of terminally ill diseases on your watch? What did you do? What did you do when Syrian refugees were coming to our communities? Did you support them? Did you, pro did you share Allah's blessings with them? What did you do when there was injustice happening in your midst? Our Lord will ask us, sisters and brothers, and I'm praying that you all will have the answers that are deserving of our Lord. Sisters and brothers, people say, Sister Linda, you are encouraging our young people. You are motivating our young people. Sisters and brothers, I should not have to encourage or motivate you to become active members of this society. I should not have to encourage and motivate you to stand up against injustice, regardless of who that injustice is being committed against. Sisters and brothers, you are a people who follow a faith of justice. You are the followers of Allah who is the most just. In this country, you have absolutely no choice but to stand up and defend your right to be unapologetically Muslim in these United States of America. Sisters and brothers, it is a true injustice on our community. And we will answer to Allah on the day of judgment. Just to give you a little update about me, 
from the last time that you saw me at Mass Ikna, nothing really has changed except more people hate me now than they did last year. And to be very clear, the spectrum is broad, all the way from the conservative right to all the way from the political left and everybody in between, including some Muslim dictatorships. The reason why I say that to all of you sisters and brothers is that I choose every single day, no matter what the circumstances are or the consequences, to stand up against injustice. I don't care what any man or woman in our community or outside our community thinks about it, as long as I believe that Allah approves of it. We sisters and brothers do not live for this life that we live here on this earth. Our existence as Muslims is not for dunya. It is about what we will take with us to the next life. So when you see things online or you say, oh, poor sister Linda, the right wing is attacking her. People are sending her death threats. People are marginalizing her. People are defaming her character. I want you to stop and say, only what Allah thinks of her character matters. And when I get death threats, I want you to know that Allah gives life and Allah takes life. So when Allah wants me, he will take me, sisters and brothers. I want you to be a courageous community. I want you to instill moral courage in your children. I'm not afraid of Islamophobe, sisters and brothers. The only fear that I have in my heart is the fear of Allah, sisters and brothers. And that is how we become a courageous community. When we stop worrying about the consequences of the dunya and worry about the consequences of our akhirah, sisters and brothers. Because that's all that matters. I ask you, my dear sisters and brothers, to be a people of justice. I also ask you, to pray with me. I ask Allah to instill the moral courage in all of you, in all the Muslims around the world. I ask Allah to bring justice to the people of Yemen. My heart breaks for the people of Yemen. They are a kind and generous community, sisters and brothers, and they have stood with all of us and it is incumbent on us to stand with the people of Yemen. I pray that Allah brings justice to the people of Syria. The destruction, the displacement, the genocide that the Syrian people have seen, sisters and brothers, may Allah alleviate their suffering. I ask Allah to bring justice to the people of Sudan. And may they reap dignity from their pursuit of justice. I ask Allah to bring justice to the people of Somalia, to my beloved people of Palestine. I ask Allah to bring justice to every corner of this world and to every oppressed community. May Allah, sisters and brothers, protect us protect our communities, our masajid, our religious leaders. May Allah protect Mass Ikna and the staff and the volunteers of Mass Ikna. I leave you with this, sisters and brothers. Stand up against injustice, even if it's against yourself, your parents, or your kin. Don't forget, you are a people of justice, you follow a religion of justice, and you follow Allah, the most just. I am deeply honored to be a daughter of your community. Assalamu alaikum, and may you all have a blessed evening.